cardboarders, welcome back. Today we're going to look at our Chishiro Umezawa deck, which we voted on on the channel. A quick reminder, if you haven't voted already, there is another commander vote happening right this moment. So go to the community tab, check it out, and leave it a vote. Your vote decides which deck I'm going to build next. But now it's time for another installment of... Think outside the deck box. Now let's look at our commander here first. I got the secret lair version here, which I just found very pretty, and another reason why I wanted to build this deck. Let's quickly read through this card. It says one and two black. It's a two two human samurai. It has Bushido one, which is pretty much irrelevant for this deck. If I block or this creature becomes blocked, it gets plus one plus one. More importantly, whenever a creature of an opponent dies, I get to cast flashback one of my instants in my graveyards. The mana costs are the same, and if I cast it, it gets exiled. So the general idea of how to build this commander is getting rid of a whole bunch of opponent's creatures and enabling me to recast a whole bunch of my instants. So we're building kind of like a mono black spell slingers deck here. Keep in mind when you look at the around 25 maybe 24 instants we put in this deck that we are able to recast each of them at least once again throughout the game depending on if we need it or not. I split the deck into different piles as oh so often put a pile here, the removal pile, put another pile here, the card draw pile, the ramp pile, the rest of the cards pile, and the lands pile. And we're gonna start with the removal pile first. Gonna glance over them. Not gonna read through all the cards, but I will comment on some of them, why I included them. So let's first look at lethal scheme, has convoke, which I'm Probably not going to use that often, maybe with my commander. I'm always trying to have my commander on the board to be able to recast my instance. And I'm going to destroy a creature planeswalker, and each creature that convoked for the spell may connive and fix my cards. We have another card that destroys a creature, and I may surveil, which might put some instance I want in the graveyard into it. Maybe I want to draw them, we'll see. This one can be cast without paying the mana costs. Very useful, also very useful when something dies during an opponent turn and I don't have any mana open. I may use this without casting mana. Tragic Slip, wonderful to kill another creature. If one died already, dismember, great removal. Defile, another great removal. We're playing a whole bunch of swamps in this deck. This one will kill pretty much any creature on the board. Feed the Swarm to be able to handle some enchantments, but sometimes I might want to destroy another creature. Libation here, the same. Forcing an opponent to sacrifice an enchantment, and I may recast it as it is an instant. Sats Will. Most of the time I will choose both modes, but it happens that I sometimes don't have my commander on board. Either they sacrifice their strongest creature, and or, most of the time and, I exile all opponent's graveyards and get x01 thralls equal to the biggest power among the creatures that were exiled this way. Edict, great new card that was printed in a more recent set, very versatile, can't say anything neg negative about it. Already dead, also a great card, kind of a cantrip, and if a creature was dealt damage in any way, any turn, I can kill it and replace it with a new card. This is also a great cantrip, removes one card from a graveyard. Probably your opponent is already targeting it and you just get rid of it before they can reanimate it or whatever they want to do. Oubliet, great way to deal with non-destructible creatures. This one we had in a recent card spotlight video. This allows me to counter a creature spell in black for just three life points. If you haven't tried this one out, do give it a try. Here are more reasons why you should include it. But just generally to be able to remove a commander is just an odd include in my eyes to have a little mono black control here. Now we are moving into the board wipe category. This one, as soon as I have threshold, so seven or more cards, I may deal one damage to each creature and each player. So this one gets rid of probably a whole bunch of tokens and 1-1 mana dorks and stuff. So this one should 
trigger Toshiro at least once, and then I may recast an instant from my graveyard, and I can also destroy a land, so maybe get rid of a cradle or whatever. Force of Despair, I may cast this without paying the mana cost, very great, and destroy all creatures that entered this turn. If someone has an explosive to start, I may remove them. And Damnation is also in here, as well as the Massacre Worm, and we try to keep this Wormy here alive for a bunch of turns. Into the card draw category we go. This one maybe is not so known, since it's quite an old card, but this is probably like a Necropotence, but only once as an instant, the end of my turn. Just general solid card draw as an instant, and I may recast it with my commander. This one I'm trying out, and I cast it already like twice or three times already, and always it was an interesting discussion at the table if they should give me the face down or face up pile. So yeah, consider this in also maybe some political builds with your black decks. And since it's an instant, I may recast it. Cling to Dust, another solid card, also include in my eyes in any black deck. Gets rid of any card in a graveyard at instant speed and you may draw a card. You could even gain life if you want and it has escape. So I may even cast it multiple times th throughout the game, even without Toshiro on the board. Blood Pact can also kill a player if I want to, but most of the time I will draw a card. Siphon Mind, sadly a sorcery, but still very useful to get some cards from my opponent's hand. Get rid of them, I mean. Uh, Dark Deal is a very underplayed in my eyes and unknown wheel in black. The fact that it draws one card less is minimal in my eyes since it affects everyone at the table. And I don't mind that much because I want cards in my graveyard, so if I discard instants I can still reuse them. Greed, just a solid enchantment that lets me draw a whole bunch of cards. Phyrexian Arena as well. This, uh, I think, Strixhaven Commander card is also in the card draw category since I am able to kind of draw cards from my opponent's deck and I actually hit some nice cards throughout the playtest games once I also hit a Miraris Wake and a Aetherflux Reservoir so that was nice. I am actually not playing Aetherflux Reservoir in this deck since I'm not a cantrips kind of deck but actually the turn kind of made me think that I might want to include it but I chose not to since I already have it in my Orzhov cantrips deck. Necropotence, solid inclusion, nothing more to say here. This guy is probably not as well known since we are playing a whole bunch of swamps. I may either drain life or draw a card. And the Harvester of Souls is just a general nice inclusion. If a lot of creatures die, I may draw cards. Now on to the ramp category. We are playing a wonderful Mox here. Just general nice auto-include if you're playing like monocolored or two-colored decks. I think it's auto-include if you can afford it. Soaring, got the bobble here, as well as a Bolt. We're playing Bubbling Muck for an explosive turn, similar to High Tide. Dark Ritual, we can actually use it twice since it's an instant. Diamond, Dynamo, Crypt Gas, just very nice and useful. We are draining ourselves also a lot. Having the option to drain life from everyone is just wonderful. By the way, if you're having this discussion in your group, this is a reminder text, so this card can be included in a non-white deck, since it is not part of the identity, color identity of this card. If it wasn't in the reminder text, it would be, but it is not. Revenant here, same as, as the Ghast, doubles my Swampies, and Crick most of the times gets destroyed as soon as he hits the board, but maybe we can reanimate or save him with some of the spells, and here we shall see. Now we are playing Darkness here from Legends, still this from my set cube, but I will probably order another one since it's just a wonderful fog and the ability to kill a creature and trigger him and being able to cast fog again from my graveyard is just wonderful. Playing the rebirth here to save one of our creatures, maybe one of these three for example, or one of the other mana dorks. So this most of the time will save a creature, but sometimes if I am really desperate I want it as a land. Another card that saves any of my creatures Again, giving it Undying. 
another drainer here if I have like 10 lands in play this drains for 10 so that's wonderful and it can obviously kill a creature this one doesn't give you instance in your graveyard like your sorceries don't become instance but still being able to cast sorceries at instant speed is a nice thing to do and surprising your opponent I found this to be a nice inclusion bitter blossom just to have something to block since we're not playing a creature heavy deck the scepter I found a nice auto include since we are playing a spell slinger deck and we are having a whole bunch of cards that cost two or less mana costs and being able to cast them over and over again throughout the turns means that opponents will have to destroy this at some point. Lightning Greaves just to protect some of our creatures here. Some tutor actions which also will throw an instant into our graveyard. We are playing Animate Dead, can also reanimate an opponent's creature which we just killed maybe. Some very fair demonic tutor here, the diabolic one for four mana can obviously be replaced by a demonic tutor. With Tormort here, since we are gonna get rid of some cards in our graveyard by casting them and exiling them, and he'll give us some 2-2 nice zombie blockers or attackers even. Similarly, the witch, whenever we cast a instant, we get a 1-1 one, one little dork that when it dies gives us a life point, very nice and hard to remove and block. Some drainage here. This one I find very beautiful and is kind of a pet card for me since I do like to include it in several decks. Again, this is one of the moments where I like to put it into this deck. I do like the randomness of this and everyone being affected by this. And even if we discard a card that we didn't like, we can reanimate it. Or when it's an instant, we can actually recast it. So every fourth card we have in our deck, we actually don't mind if we discard it, you know? So this one I just like as a fun card that your opponent will at some point eventually have to destroy and instead of destroying important cards they destroy this. Somehow we have to end the game. This is one of the ways with a Xan grenade. Classical finisher. Another way to kill our opponents with Sir Conrad here. Dealing damage to all your opponents by having them throw cards in their graveyard or their creatures dying. And this will trigger Sir Conrad. Another win con is the Torment of Hailfire. If we collected enough mana, our opponents will probably, hopefully, die with this. The will actually allows us to get access to non-instant cards. That's why I included it. And since we are playing a graveyard heavy deck, I thought this was a no-brainer to include it. This one also not many people know about. This is a reserved list card that is actually quite cheap for its effect. For four mana you have to sacrifice a creature, hopefully a token, but maybe sometimes you will have to sacrifice your commander. And you may gain control of, of a non-black, non-artifact creature. And this card I'm testing out in this deck, just a general fun card I think, and you can just take the strongest creature on the board. Since we are having a lot of creatures die, why not punish our opponents with dealing another 2 damage every time that happens? The Shades form can actually enchant an opponent's creature and, well, it returns under your control. But it can obviously also just save one of your important creatures if there is nothing special on the board at that time. Playing the Shadow Spear here just to get rid of Hexproof and Indestructible and also for the lifelink aspect here and lastly before we hit into the lands, we have the Blanket of Night as a wonderful, nice budget alternative for Urborg. Do give it a try. Even if you are playing Urborg, redundancy is nothing that should be undervalued. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is our last pile here before we call it quits for today. We're playing our three cycling lands. Just because we are going to draw a whole bunch of cards, all of these can be cycled for just one or two mana and we draw a new card very useful this land actually has removal stapled onto it since at seven or more cards in our graveyard we can just sacrifice it and give a creature minus two minus two either we remove a commander or anything that is annoying us too much and we can recast our instance again the castle is a way to draw cards if we are really desperate since we are losing a whole bunch of life but i think it's a nice inclusion. 
Cowboy Coffers, obviously, as well as the Stronghold. We are playing Pl Blanket of Night in here. I would also include Urborg if I had another one. So if you're building this deck, include another Urborg for a Swamp, maybe. This one may copy one of our Cowboy Coffers or Strongholds, you name it. Or maybe your opponent has a nice land you want to copy. Maybe you want to copy the Tomb here, getting two mana for two life. We're playing also the Temple, which I know there are heated discussions about it. But I think in a mono or two color deck, I think it's still able to be included. And if you are playing like more casual decks, this card is still a good card, I think. We are playing two of the fetch lands here. Both of them will fetch swamps, so there's nothing else to fetch, but it just thins out your deck. And the rest of the cards are swamps. And I wanted this wonderful artwork here from Odyssey, since it just fits very nicely with the commander, I think. We've reached the end of the video. Don't forget to vote. I want to hear from you guys that you enjoy this deck. Got any constructive feedback about cards that you would remove or replace by any other cards? The deck list is in the description below. I hope you are having a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. More importantly, whenever, whenever a creature of an opponent dies, not gonna read through all the cards, but I will comment on some of them why I included why I included them. Libation here, the same, forcing an opponent, forcing, forcing an opponent to sacrifice an enchantment.